Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing the solution of a three-level factorial design using our software. So here we have a problem from three-level factorial design with two factors. And you can read what the experiment is all about on your screen. I will just summarize it for you. It is about a distance traveled by an electric car after charging its battery. So obviously the distance travel depends on the charging time of the battery. So this is one factor which is set at three levels, 18R, 24R and 30R. The other factor is operating speed, the speed at which the car is run. This factor is also set at three levels, 56 km per hour, 72 km per hour and 88 km per hour. You can observe the design is replicated twice because for each treatment combination we have two observation that is in each cell if you observe we have two observation so the design is replicated twice and we start with feeding the data so first we feed the first replicate and then the second replicate and then we'll, we will be feeding the levels of the factors accordingly. Actually, to solve this problem, I have already already written all the codes, which uh, which you can see on the screen. I will just explain you all these codes and their execution. As I said, we will be first feeding the replicate one and then replicate two. So replicate one is actually saved in the object dist one. Dist stands for distance, and replicate two is fed in object dist two. And if you notice, we have fed the observation row-wise. See, 330, 355, 380, 335. 330, 355, 380, 335. So first, we are feeding the first observation in each cell row-wise and as a replicate one. And then second observation in each cell row-wise as a replicate two. This knowledge about the feeding of the data row wise or column wise will be required while feeding the levels of the factors. Before uh, feeding our levels of the factor, we combine these two objects, dist1 and dist2, in the object distance using the concatenate function. And our yield we define as yield equal to dist1 plus dist2. So, from our knowledge of factorial design, we know that yield is simply addition of the replicates. So dist1 and dist2 is addition of these two replicates and this will give us the yield of the treatment combinations. So let us first execute these four rows of dist1, dist2, distance and yield. Now we feed our first factor operating speed. If you look at the data, the way they are fed, the first replicate is 330, 355 and 380. All these three observations correspond to the first level of operating speed 56. And then next three observations 335, 377 and 390 correspond to 72. And then 326, 390 and 388 correspond to 88. So the corresponding levels for the first replicate will be 56 3 times, 72 3 times and then 88 3 times and then the same pattern will be repeated again for the replicate 2. So if you see we define operating speed as repeating this vector of 56, 72, 88 each of these numbers will be replicated uh, 3 times 3, 3, 3 or repeated 3 times and then this entire sequence is again repeated two times using the syntax REP. So I'm going to execute this and we will see how the data is fed for operating speed. So you can see here in the console window, the levels are 56, 56, 56, then 72, three times, then 88, three times. Again, 56, three times, 72, three times and 88, three times. Now because we want to run ANOVA, so this factor operating speed must be converted into a categorical variable. Otherwise, it will be read as a continuous variable and software will run regression instead of ANOVA. So in order to achieve this, we use the syntax factor. 
so the code is op speed is equal to factor of op speed op speed in parenthesis this will convert the factor or object of speed into a categorical variable we execute this now we need to feed the levels of the factor charging time we know the observations are fed row wise so first first so for first three observation 330 355 and 380 the levels of charging time are 18 24 and 30 and then for next three set of observations 335 377 and 390 the levels are 18 24 and 30 and then for last three sets of observation again the levels will be 18 24 and 30 and then this entire sequence will be repeated once again for the next replicate so our sequence of the levels of charging time should be 18 24 30 and it should be repeated actually six times three for three rows and then again three for the next replicate so we define charge time equal to we use the repeat syntax and the vector 18 24 30 will be repeated six times so we execute this and see how our object charge time looks like see 18 24 30 18 24 30 it's repeated six times now again we need to convert this object charge time also into a categorical variable or categorical factor using the syntax factor so charge time equal to factor of charge time and this is also executed now we define our model using the syntax lm which stands for linear model and our arguments are distance tilde charge time star of speed now this star actually stands for multiplication which means a design with interaction will be fitted if instead of star we would have plus then a design without interaction would be fit but we want a design with interaction so now we will keep star as it is and let us execute this now it is executed as we can see in the console window and now we want the ANOVA of the model the syntax is ANOVA of model model in parenthesis and if we execute this we can see the ANOVA table charge time here operating speed as the source of variations and the interaction between the charge time and operating speed and then the residues so charge time has two degrees of freedom operating speed two degrees of freedom the interaction four degrees of freedom residual line and then we have the columns of sums of square mean sum of squares f value and P value we can observe the p value for charge time is too small so it is significant and for operating speed also it is very small so operating speed is also significant but the interaction term is insignificant as the p value for it is very large now if we want to write the ANOVA table for the components of the main effect and interaction effect then obviously the software is not giving us that kind of ANOVA table so we need to write the code for it ourselves and for that we will be requiring the contrast because the computation of sum of square requires contrast and the computation of contrast requires the coefficients of the contrast and here in the theory we have coefficients of the contrast so this row here correspond to the coefficients of the contrast for linear effect of A then for quotients or contrast of quadratic effect of A is given by the second row. So we are going to feed this matrix of contrast. So what I am going to do is simply copy paste this coefficients in our software which is of dimension H by 9. We have 8 rows and 9 columns. So here we have copy pasted the entire matrix of coefficient as they are and we use the syntax matrix to define our matrix and we save this matrix in the object cof underscore matrix stands for coefficient matrix and 8 and 9 are the arguments for the number of rows and number of columns and yes we want these numbers to be fed row wise so I make the argument by row equal to true so this will define my coefficient matrix i execute this i press ctrl plus enter now this is executed so now let us see how our coefficient matrix looks like so i execute now coef matrix and you can see our coefficient matrix 
in the console. Now the computation of the contrast will require a vector of yield which is actually value of 1 a a square b a b a square b b square a b square and a square b square. These are the yield and notice that they must be fed in the standard order. This is also called Yates order. We have already defined the vector yield or the object yield in the R software which is dist1 plus dist2 that is sum of the two replicates and it is in standard order actually already because if I assume charging time as factor A and operating speed as factor B then the three levels of factor A are 182430 which we denote by 0, 1 and 2 and three levels of operating speed are 56, 72 and 88 which we denote by 0, 1, 2 again. So the sum of the observations in this cell which correspond to the level 0, 0 of the charging time and operating speed that is factor A and B is yield on 1. Then sum of these two observation is yield on A and then sum of these two observation is yield on A square. Similarly, the other yields are B, a b a square b b square a b square and a square b square and we have fed the observation row wise and therefore the elements in the object yield that we have defined in r is also the sum of the observation in the cells row wise so actually the elements of the object yield are 1 a a square b a b a square b and then b square a b square and a square b square which is standard order or Yates order. So now our contrast vector will be simply the matrix multiplication of the quotient matrix and yield which we find as coefficient matrix percentage star percentage this is actually the operation in R for the matrix multiplication we execute this and we find our contrast as this actually 316 correspond to A that is linear component of A minus 236 correspond to quadratic component of A then 138 is linear component of B minus 44 is quadratic component of B and then last 4 contrast are the components of interaction between A and B. The quotient matrix may not always be re readily available. Therefore, we need to develop an alternative way to define the quotient matrix, which will be helpful for us if there are more number of factors and we will be able to define the quotient matrix easily. So if I assume a factor A is charge time, and operating speed is factor B then if you notice the coefficients for linear component of A are minus 101 minus 101 minus 101 that is minus 101 repeated three times so we define A as repeat minus 1 2 pan minus 1 colon 1 so this will give us a vector minus 101 and it will be repeated three times we ex execute it and see how it looks now for A square or the quadratic component of A, the quotients are 1 minus 2, 1, 1 minus 2, 1, 1 minus 2, 1. So 1 minus 2, 1 is again repeated 3 times. So we define A square as repeat the vector 1 minus 2, 1, 3 times. Now for BL, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So we want each of the element minus 1, 0, and 1 to be repeated 3 times. So we define repeat minus 1 colon 1 and each element of this vector will be repeated 3 3 3 times you can see it in the console window now in the similar fashion we define the coefficient for quadratic component of main effect of b we denote it by b2 so actually b2 stands for b square here a2 stands for a square so we are repeating 1 3 times minus 2 3 times and 1 3 times so 1 minus 2 1 each will be repeated 3 times and in this table we have already discussed this before 
द कोफिशेंट्स फॉर द इंटरक्शन कॉम्पोनेंट्स आर एक्चुअली प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द करस्पॉन्डिंग कोफिशेंट्स फॉर द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ मेन इफेक्ट सो एक्चुअली ए एल बी एल इज एक्चुअली प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द कोफिशेंट्स ऑफ ए एल एंड बी एल ए एल बी क्यू इज प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द कोफिशेंट्स फॉर ए एल एंड बी क्यू सो नाउ वी कैन डिफाइन ए बी विच इज ए एल बी एल एज ए इन टू बी ए ए स्क्वायर बी बी स्क्वायर बी आई ऑलरेडी डिफाइन ए टू बी इज ए स्क्वायर बी सो इट इज प्रोडक्ट ऑफ ए स्क्वायर इन टू बी ए बी स्क्वायर प्रोडक्ट ऑफ ए एंड बी स्क्वायर एंड ए स्क्वायर बी स्क्वायर इज प्रोडक्ट ऑफ ए स्क्वायर एंड बी स्क्वायर सो आर क्वेश्चन मेट्रिक्स आई राइट इट एज को एफ अंडर स्कोर मेट्रिक्स एंड देन वन बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिफाइंड अ क्वेश्चन मेट्रिक्स सो आई नीड टू सेव दिस मेट्रिक्स इन टू अनदर ऑब्जेक्ट इज वी डिफाइन यूजिंग द सिंटैक्स आर बाइंड एग्जीक्यूट दिस नाउ एंड वी कैन see our coefficient matrix same as the coefficient matrix that we had fed before by feeding every single element so this new coefficient matrix is actually same as the last one so this was only for the demonstration purpose we have already computed the contrast and now we need the divisor to find the sum of square in this table we have also given the divisor for the sum of square so for al it is 6n for aq it is 18n for bl it is 6n and so on for the others so n actually stands for the number of replication of the experiment in this case it is 2 so the divisor will become 12 36 12 36 8 24 24 72 so we have fed these devices in a vector in r in the object divisor like this alternatively we can also define the divisor using the formula d equal to n times 2 raised to h into 3 raised to k minus p this formula may prove to be useful when we have large number of factors and we cannot keep feeding the divisor for every component because we will be having large number of components and this formula h is the order of the interaction k is the number of factors in the design and p is the number of factors in the interaction contributing linearly so for our particular experiment n is equal to 2 Two raised to h into three raised to two minus p because k is equal to two. We have only two factors. Now let us define the variable h and p on which our divisor d depends. So actually, we have to find the divisor for these components here: a a square b b square a b a b square a square b and a square b square. So let us first define the order of these components. so for first four components a a square b b square the order is 1 and for the last four components the order is 2 a b a b square a square b and a square b square so we define our h as repeat 1 and 2 each four times so let us execute this so see now we need to define the number of factors in each component or interaction that contribute linearly in a a is the only factor and it is contributing linearly so the value of p is 1 in a square no factor is contributing linearly so value of p is 0 in b is contributing linearly in b square no factor is contributing linearly so again 1 and 0 in ab both the factors are contributing linearly so the value of p will be 2 ab square and a square b one factor is contributing linearly so 1 and 1 and in a square b square no factors are contributing linearly so the value of p is 0 so let us execute p so now we define our function div so div actually stands for divisor which is function of h and p and the form of this function is d equal to 2 into 2 raised to h into 
3 raised to 2 minus p which we just saw in this formula here 2 into 2 raised to h into 3 raised to 2 minus p and then we want d to be returned so we save our divisor d v i s r divisor equal to div which is our function of h and p h and p we have defined here so we execute this uh, div function and then divisor and let us see our divisor so we can see our divisor 12 36 12 36 8 24 24 72 and this is same as this one here that we had fed after computing the divisors manually so now that we have contrast and divisor we define our sum of square as contrast square divided by the divisor and we want to round these sum of squares up to two decimal places our syntax is round sum of square to two decimal places so we again save this into the object ss itself we define g as a grand total so sum of all the elements in the vector distance that we had defined earlier n is equal to number of observation in our experiment there are 18 observations so we define total sum of square total sum of square is sum of square of the elements so sum of square of the elements in the distance minus the correction factor correction factor is g square by n now we want to again round this to two decimal places so we use a syntax round so total sum of square sse stands for sum of square due to error or error sum of square which will be of course total sum of square minus sum of all the sum of squares that we have found let's execute this now we need to define the source of variation the vector that we will be feeding in our data frame of ANOVA table. See this, I'm just broadening our editor window. So my sources of variations are A, A square, B, B square and A, B, A, B square, A square, B and then A square, B square and then error and then total. So now we define the sum of square column for the data frame of ANO, ANOVA table which will be actually the sum of square that we computed for the component of the main effect and interaction then sum of square due to error and total sum of square each of these quantities i want to be rounded up to two decimal places so i use the syntax my sum of square vector is also executed each of the components has one degree of freedom and there are eight such components i'm repeating one eight times there are 18 observations so total degrees of freedom is 17 and the remaining nine degrees of freedom will be assigned to residual so this vector is saved in the object degrees of freedom now we define mean sum of square which is obviously sum of square divided by degrees of freedom and then i want mean sum of square also to be rounded to two decimal places so in mss actually the total sum of square will also be divided by its corresponding degrees of freedom and we don't want that element in the anova table so we define mean sum of square another column for it which is mss minus length of mss so in mss last element will be the total sum of square divided by its corresponding degrees of freedom so length of mss will actually give us the last element order or the number and we have put minus sign here it means the last element of the mss will be excluded and in place of that i simply want dash so i put dash here in double inverted comma then mean square error is actually sum of square due to error 
our error sum of square divided by its degrees of freedom 9 and I again round the mean square error also up to two decimal places so f ratio is actually mean sum of square divided by mean sum of square due to error so here we had defined mean sum of square we divide each element of mean sum of square by mean square error and we want only first eight element of that vector because we want the f ratio only for the first eight element which are actually eight components and each of these f ratio should be rounded to two decimal places now against the source of variation error we want dash in this column and also against the total we want dash in this column so f ratio we define like this so now we define our ANOVA as data frame so syntax is data dot frame and the columns are source of variation sum of square degrees of freedom then mean sum of square and then f ratio all these vectors we just defined we execute ANOVA and let us see how our ANOVA looks like before that I will enlarge the console window because the heading of the columns are large so actually the last two columns are brought down so see here we have source of variation then sum of square then degrees of freedom then we have mean sum of square and then f ratio this f ratio must be compared with the f quantile or quantile from f distribution with degrees of freedom 1 and 9 and level of significance alpha so i use the syntax qf quantile from f distribution lower tail probability will be 0 0.95 because the level of significance is 0 0.05 so actually it is upper tail probability so i define lower tail probability as 0 0.95 if you want to use 0 0.05 you have to use the argument lower dot tail equal to false degrees of freedom are 1 and 9 let us execute this so we can see that the linear component of main effect of a is significant 69.63 is obviously larger than 5.11 and then quadratic effect of A is also significant linear effect of B is significant but quadratic effect of B is insignificant and then obviously all the four interaction components are insignificant because we had seen that interaction the overall interaction AB was insignificant itself in the an OVA table that we had computed in the beginning. The question also asks to partition the two factor interaction into i and j components of interaction. That is, it wants the sum of square for the pencil 1, 1 and pencil 1, 2. So, pencil 1, 1 is actually representative of AB and A square B square, and pencil 1, 2 is representative of A square B and AB square. So we will be adding the sum of squares for AB and A square B square to find the sum of square for pencil 1 1 and adding the sum of squares for A square B and AB square to find the sum of square for pencil 1 2. So actually we already have all the sum of square for the components in the vector sum of square and in the vector sum of square fifth ele element correspond to the interaction AB and eighth element correspond to the interaction a square b square so we extract these two elements fifth and eighth element of the vector sum of square and add these two and sixth and seventh element of the vector sum of square correspond to the interaction a b square and a square b so we extract them and add them and get the sum of square for the pencil p 1 2 